Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode I decided to go ahead with a series of Mars missions that we had constructed and uh, this is actually an old one. There's a Mars class vessel built on a Nico rocket and so it's just been sitting in storage for a very long time. We've also got a Mars class vessel transfer stage because this can't be transferred using this rocket. Uh, we actually need to set up a separate J2 transfer stage to dock to it and push it along. And we could use the Nerva tug, and but we've already built this trans transfer stage, so I guess I'll just try that out instead. Uh, beyond that, we've got plenty of other things. This UDMH depot, we could use that for um, lunar orbit instead if we want to, but um, I'll think about that. Maybe we'll just keep that around. But uh, certainly, uh, this uh, these crew, uh, not crew masters. Uh, the Ares Pod G2, Mars Port 1, Aero and TO Depot, and Mars Base 1 and Ares Pod G2 again. All those are basically Mars missions, and so we'll use them as such. And so I'll have a bunch of new missions, <laughs> even though I was trying to clean, clear things up a little bit. But let's get on with it. Uh, I'll fly this one manually because it's a Nico rocket. I don't want to figure out a launch script for it right now. So with that, SAS on, throttle this up, and ignition. And launch. So this is basically a space station component. And I've got a UKS Pioneer module here. I labeled non-RP0, but I made sure the cost was reasonable compared to other station modules in RP0. So. Um, that at least is there. It doesn't have that much electric charge. You've got solar panels. We do have this regular habitation module as well. So, and that has capacity for four. I believe the Pioneer module has some recycling systems, but I don't know how well they'll work. We'll see. Uh, or maybe it doesn't in this. Oh, no, it says start life support. So it has some sort of recycling. We'll see how that works out. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. And booster separation. Oh, they always tilt in like that on this rocket. Oh, there's a pause. How bad a pause is this? Game crashing pause. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, well, the game crashing left the rocket on the launch pad, so we'll try this again, but if the game crashes again, I'm going to assume that there's something fundamental about this that just doesn't work. I am worried about the boosters tipping in. I think this was a problem with this rocket, and uh, maybe it'll explode the core stage, I don't know. But let's find out. Uh, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. Okay, a bit steeper than I had it last time. Getting ready for booster separation. Uh, well... Maybe I should keep it pointing prograde. Uh, hopefully that's close enough. Separ separation? Okay. They're off. And they're off safely. We only have 20 more seconds, well, 15 more seconds on the core now. It's actually recoverable. It's got parachutes and it's got floats. Okay, separation. And the ignition. Okay, four NK-43s, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully they're not 15 Vs still. Okay, separation. I guess we got some fairing separation here, and then ignition. These are the NK... I think either 19 or 31s. I forget which one they're configured as. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. Looks like we had enough fuel, thankfully. And 
shut down. Oh, whoa, whoa, shut down, shut down, shut down, shut down. I think it was because my mouse is hovering above this. Okay, well, we're in a somewhat higher orbit than I was looking for, but I guess for the transfer stage to rendezvous with it, that's not a bad thing, because it'll make it easier. That that stage can get into a lower orbit. But, yep, all right, uh, let's separate this part off. Okay, uh, this we really don't want to ever decouple, so hold on. Should be careful about that sort of thing. Really, we don't need to activate the engines right now. Let's just have these up. RCS forward. And we're okay so far. Uh, it only says 2,002 meters per second, and it's heavier than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Well, uh, maybe we'll figure that out. Hold on. Maybe if I stage it. No, it still says 2,002. I don't know if that's got to be enough to capture around Mars. Um, and ship manifest is not popping up, so I can't force dump the food, water, and oxygen. This might be problematic. I thought I had more, but maybe it was uh, reading it as if I was going to decouple this first. In which case, that would be wrong. And so I was getting the wrong number for how much delta V this has. Okay, but uh, well, well, we'll do what we plan to do with it anyway. Okay, so this is a somewhat larger Nico rocket, but still a Nico rocket, and it is going to loft uh, basically a J2 stage into orbit to push the Mars class vessel on its way. Hopefully, it's going to be enough. We'll see. And, uh, and of course, this was put together a long, long time ago, so maybe I got right, but. There is probably a reason why I didn't attempt to launch it at our first Mars window. It's not the most mm, reasonable thing at our current stage, and we could be doing better. But since we had it lying around, I just wanted to clear it up and have it do its thing for better or for worse. So we'll see. I mean, this uh, craft file is probably more than a year old at this point. So yeah, we've uh, got a l relatively low inclination with the target. I'm going to manually fly it, throttle up, SAS on, and we've got 12 boosters plus 9 core engines. Ignition. And launch. Basically this is a Saturn V class rocket. Uh, 21 of the engines from the N1, so not a full N1, but we don't really need the full N1 because our engines don't fail quite that often. We have the upgraded versions of the NK engines. But basically it's the NK engines and then a stage with J2s and then uh, the rest of the rocket is more or less a Saturn V, except we're lofting the entire Saturn V third stage into orbit. Oh, we, well we did lose one engine somewhere, that one. Uh, nothing we can do about that. Oh, it is actually deviating. I didn't expect that. I thought the... I thought I'd be able to compensate. Fine, I'll shut down this engine. I thought I'd be able to compensate for that with the gimbling. Just as you say, we've got more reliable engines. Sure enough, we get an engine failure. Okay, booster separation. The two boosters that didn't finish their burn, of course, were heavy, so they didn't separate quite as vigorously, but they did separate. We barely have a thrust weight ratio of 1 right now, so that's not wonderful. Okay, getting ready for this stage to be out. We've got enough time to wap wapsis, but I don't know if we have enough delta V to actually complete the burn with this stage. 
separation and ignition. Okay, the five J2s burning for six minutes as on the Saturn V. And we are gonna have to keep a high pitch because the thrust to weight ratio is basically as it was on Saturn V as well. Actually, probably a little bit better because we're lacking the payload. Yeah, we'll definitely have to use some of this upper stage in order to complete the burn. I'll unlock the fuels now. Sorry, lost some due to boil off. Alright, that stage is done. Uh, I see a bit of a problem. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 we were controlling from the wrong thing, apparently. Okay, and I actually wanted to activate this engine. Surprisingly enough. We've got some hypergolic engines, and that's for making the rendezvous. But we need the big engine right now. We should have enough electric charge, though, uh... I now wish that we had put solar panels on here. Well, that's orbit. But it's gonna take a bit of time to actually catch up with the target like this. Yep. And how's boil off in that time? Pretty bad. But just to be somewhat honest about it, I'll stick with this. I could switch vessels and avoid the boil off, but... Let's see what we get. As expected, the electric charge, I think, will hold out until we have our rendezvous. I've gotten a lot of messages here because of all the boosters that got destroyed. And stage, recovering me, uh, stage recovery telling me that they are indeed destroyed. We've got too much relative velocity to the target. We'll see what we can do with this part of the mission and then maybe use the, the rest of the mission to fix things. I'm not sure that's a, that's gonna be a good idea, but... Okay, we'll have a good closest approach distance like that. Hopefully we'll still have enough Delta V to complete the rendezvous. Looks like I didn't pack uh, too much extra hypergolic fuels. Okay, 55 meters per second. Oops, settled fuel down. Always interesting when the distance to target is lower than the closest approach distance. Okay, well we are approaching the Mars class vessel and we'll see how much Delta V we actually have after we dock with it. I don't know if it's gonna be enough to actually transfer it over to Mars. I wonder if it'll be enough to transfer it over to the moon, which might be an alternate possibility, actually. I mean, it's got supplies, it's a station module, it could expand our lunar station if we want that to happen instead. I mean, that's a viable option. And it does have uh, the life support in the Pioneer module that might be useful. Still a bump. Okay, now we're connected. Let's switch off the engines that need to be switched off. 3,467 meters per second is what we've got available to us. Um, we could uh, not have crossfeed here. Uh, disable crossfeed. Make sure that's closed up so that doesn't use this fuel. And we can activate these engines and see. No, I disabled crossfeed. There's no way you're getting that kind of performance. Okay, so we could have these burn out all of the hypergolic fuel in this portion first, and then light this. But still, it seems like we get about 3,526. And quickly, let's check how much it'll actually take to transfer to Mars. This will be enough to transfer to the moon, of course. But Mars... And even if we do use it to transfer to the moon, it seems questionable whether we could get into orbit around Mars afterwards. Well, 
Well, 3,697 it says. 3,655 now. Uh, I don't know. I think it's too obviously going to go wrong if we send it over to Mars. So let's just send it over to the moon instead. And then we'll use that to test the Pioneer module and its life support systems. Okay, well, it looks like we're going to have an awkward approach to the moon no matter what we do. So we, we will have a mid-course adjustment. And that's fine because there's plenty of Delta V in this new station module, I guess you could call it. Uh, to take care of that and get into orbit and rendezvous with the station, so no problems there. After all, it was supposed to capture around Mars in the first place. Okay, and fuel seems settled. Let me double check J2. Yes, it is. Ignition. We'll just run the Gemini lander engines at the same time as J2. Okay, well, that's the end of the hypergolic fuels in this bit. Um, okay, I need to allow it to use the hypergolic fuels up there, otherwise we can't control attitude. I don't know why those thrusters aren't being used anyway. And why the J2 isn't gimbling. I mean, come on. There's just no reason to drift away from the maneuver node. Yeah, okay. I'm convinced that Smart ASS is not doing its best work here. I'm absolutely sure it was gimbling earlier. Test flight doesn't say it uh, nixed anything. Okay, watching what's happening. And... Shut down. Pretty close. Okay, and we're going to have to figure out the mid-course adjustment, but first we'll ditch the J2 stage. Undock? I don't know, uh, this can't actually control itself anymore because those were hypergolic thrusters and it has no hypergolic fuel. Still thinks it has 1,898 meters per second with the fuel it has left over, but that's because it's not pushing that and it's mostly empty. It would have been nice to deorbit it at this point, but I'll just uh, take the easy way and probably nix it in the tracking station. Okay, well, with this correction of 22 meters per second, we'll have somewhat of a good approach to rendezvous with the station. Uh, let's add an alarm for that so that we can get at least one more. Mars mission on its way before having to deal with that. Something that can roll out in a day would be good. So let's see if we can manage that. What do we have? Uh, that's 18 hours. That That's a Lunapod. Uh, more Lunapod. Something not a Lunapod. That's one day exactly for an Ares pod. Um, this uh, Aero NTO depot is just 18 hours. The light lander is useful but uh, I feel like we could really do with this depot because then we can refill the light lander that's already there and that's already been useful or we could send an Ares pod up but uh, since this alarm is gonna be in one day and one hour we do need some time to do the transfer so yeah I think that's what I'll ro roll out oh I neglected something uh, in trying to find something to launch before this maneuver node, I forgot that I tend to time warp to limit the relative inclination to the rest of the plane of the system. And that time warping, of course, uh, is passing that maneuver node by. But I'll go with that. It's fine. It's just a mid-course adjustment. Hopefully I can do it at a different spot. It won't matter too much if it's somewhat off. Uh, just make sure not to delete the alarm on the off chance I actually forget about that vessel. I, I guess that's good enough. Hopefully 
we've got enough margin here. Okay, this is the actual transfer point. Sure, we'll launch now then. So, without further ado, ignition. Oh, I'm not supposed to be manually flying this one. Oh well. This is a Fiji uh, 21, and so this should be guided by KOS, but a little bit late for that. Okay, we're getting up in G-forces, so I'm going to shut down one of the engines, as happens with this rocket. Uh, I wonder if Smart ESS can hold it as well as Mech, uh, as well as KOS can, or whether I need to manually fly it. It just—it's not using as much of the yaw as I think it ought to. Okay, staging. And the J2 has ignited. We could probably go ahead with fairing separation. Looks like the payload is going to have to complete the transfer to Mars. Not exactly what I wanted, but I guess I'll take it. Thought this would be able to handle this payload. Apparently not. Maybe I was going too steep. It should have been a little bit shallower. That's what I get for relying on KOS to do the launches for this rocket. I'm not too sure how replacing the original UDMH and N204 with Arizina and N204 suddenly made this a whole lot heavier. I mean, I think that's all I did to change this into. Oh, and of course, I put Gemini lander engines instead of the the, the frigate engines that use UDMH and N204. But suddenly, it's uh, apparently much heavier, and I don't know why. Okay, it looks like the transfer will take five th uh, sorry, 3,592. And what kind of approach does that give us at Mars? Crash course, always good to see. So, let's get that started. Uh, well, you know what? We should probably do this burn after we do the mid-course adjustment for the Mars class vessel, because it's already pretty far off. Let's make sure this has its panels extended. Maybe I could have taken off these docking ports. It is just a fuel depot. It could have just been in line. But anyway, let's get on with things. We're actually pretty far from the intended node. Well, well, I don't know what where the heck that maneuver is actually thinking it is. It's not on our track anymore. But let's just make sure it does the right thing which is mostly an inclination adjustment. Okay, uh, no, don't follow the complete lack of no. No, don't, stop, stop, stop. Just keep going this way. Keep going this way. Yeah, when you pass the node, you can't just rely on it. Um, we could probably do a little bit better than that. Right there will be good. And then once we get into the SOI, we can bring it closer. Okay, I'm a little bit late for this burn due to a bit of a time warp mess up, but ignition. Looks like the J2 can turn us here. All right. All right. Stage is done. Separation of ignition. And now we are on the depot's fuel. Depot also has to get into orbit around Mars. And probably could have used the heat shield for that. Why do I get the feeling that I accidentally used a depot that was configured for the moon and not for Mars? 
Yeah, this doesn't seem very useful at the end of the day for Mars. I mean, we could get around there and it'll have some fuel left over, but not a whole lot. We really needed a heat shield. Okay, let's take a look at what's happening at the Mars end. Focus view. We're probably quite a bit off now. Okay, well, we've got something, but I think we need a mid-course adjustment. Uh, what we've got is a pretty horrible situation, really. Well, that gets us close, at least. Uh, that's the wrong way around, though, isn't it? Okay, there we go. Okay. Well, that's a start, but that's a huge cost for mid-course adjustment to Mars. I'll add that alarm. And hopefully we can do the other ones better. This was because I didn't do the trans-Mars injection at the right time. Okay, but back to the Mars-class vessel approaching the moon. Okay, I've taken care of the initial correction burn and now we're making orbit around the moon and attempting to rendezvous with the station. So this hasn't turned out to be the grand Mars launch episode that I had intended, but uh, we will expand our station a little bit. And, you know, a nice big moon mission is always a good thing. There's 65 tons we're carrying here, 31 parts. I'm thinking about the parts because, of course, we already have lag around the moon station and um, might want to get rid of some vessel or another in order to reduce that as we put this one on, of course. Okay, well, let's wait a little bit longer. Okay, we should be close enough. Uh, let's get things started here. Ignition. <laughs> Okay, closest approach distance going down. We'll try and get as close as possible. We'll have to do a significant burn to match speeds, of course. Okay, how long is it going to take to do this? Probably we should start off now, so negative relative velocity. 254 meters per second difference. We don't have a whole lot of thrust to weight ratio here. We do have throttling engines. <laughs> Okay, now where do we want to dock this? That is the question. We've got an awkward conglomerate of stuff here. I guess it'd make most sense to dock it here, in line with the main axis of the station, if you can call it that. Oh, I mean, here are the crew modules. There's one there, but then there's the solar truss there separating it. Other than that, uh, the rest is basically all visiting vessels. Yeah, I can definitely see there's a UDMH depot here. That's the one I accidentally used uh, in uh, to adapt to the Arizine and N204 depot. I should have used the one that was actually launched to Mars. I thought I had opened that one, but apparently not. Okay, well, we know where we're docking it. Let's just hope we can get close enough to see that location. Okay, we have a docking, it looks like. Yes, we do. Uh, you can see how much bigger the new module is compared to the old stuff on the station. It's wider. Uh, these habitation modules are just physically bigger, except for the uh, science lab. They're about the diameter of the science lab. So a solid addition, if you will, but still... Uh, let's take a look at the part count, though. We could separate some vehicles, probably the little landers. Uh, some of them need to go. Right now we're at 411 parts. So it's not entirely surprising that we have lag at around the moon uh, when we're trying to dock. So 411 parts. The new module is only 31, so uh, we've got some interesting stuff here. The displaced uh, solar panel re. As, uh, these rungs, I probably shouldn't have put all those rungs on. Uh, lots of little solar panels. We could get some Kerbals to pack them up and turn them into material kits, I suppose. 
Where, uh, we've got 600 material kits here. So yeah, I mean, we could do some disassembly, but I'm not going to do that right now. With uh, this new addition to our lunar station, even though it wasn't intended to be a new addition to our lunar station, uh, call it, and in the next episode we'll launch some more Mars missions because I've started on that track and we'll just do it. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.